Hi everyone, it's uh, Wednesday the 28th of October and uh, it's 7.25 in the evening. So, before I get into the nitty gritty of this video and show you everything I want to show you that I've picked up at charity shops and eBay and some of the things I've been up to and whatnot, I should explain what that clip is about at the beginning of this video. So, as that clip shows, water was pissing out of that light fitting. Uh, for the last three days, Victory Housing have had their um, contractors from Gasway in replacing the communal boiler in the communal boiler house. Uh, probably, probably because it's been a pain in the backside for the last two or three winter seasons. In fact, I think it was last last year, or last winter, I should say, where um, we were without hot water and heating for over a week, just because they were trying to get the parts to fix the boiler. <laughs> yeah, I think I was getting a bit old, and like I said, it, it had crapped out several times before that, or over the last sort of two or three winters, so that's all been done, that's all gone to plan. I think they've finished. I've got the new boiler in today and it's running, so... Yeah. It did involve them having to go up into this attic to do something up there. I don't know what it was. Nothing that actually involved the water leak, though. But, of course, they had to turn all the water off and whatnot in order to change the boiler. Um, so, this afternoon, I think it's about quarter past three, they obviously turned everything back on. And I knew they had because I could hear my um, bathroom radiator filling up and whatnot. I was like, oh good, you know, I've got heat. <laughs> Literally 10 minutes or so, roughly, it might have been a bit less, but I'm just guessing. After they'd done that, water started gushing from that light fitting. And I'm, I was actually through there at the time and I could hear water running like hell from somewhere and I didn't know when I come in here and saw that and I was like oh dear so I grabbed the bucket that's the first time in 11 years I've actually used that bucket for something it's, uh, <laughs> it was uh, given to me when I first moved into this flat it was like a I don't know a welcoming package there's clothes pegs and all sorts of bits and bobs in it as well um, but yeah anyway that is literally the first time in 11 years I've used that bucket for anything. And uh, for some reason I ran down to both flights of stairs to go and tell them what was going on. Because you know, I didn't know if one of their joints had burst or whatever, you know, when they were poking about up there. But anyway, they looked just as surprised as I was because I thought, you know, where could that come from? There's not a lot up there. But uh, one of them had a look up there, and what it was, we've got a water storage tank in the loft. A lot of houses in the UK have that. They have the cold water tank up in the loft. And uh, they have a ball cock in them, right? And it's just like the old toilet systems. You have a ball cock in it, you flush your tank, it sinks, opens up the inlet valve, which then refills your tank and of course as the bullcock rises it gets to a point to where it closes the valve and shuts the water off. Same principle up there in one of those water tanks but the problem was it stuck open. Um, I don't know if the bullcock had just rotted and got a hole in it and it just filled with water instead and just stuck down like that but yeah basically that failed and overflowed the water tank into my flat. <laughs> Luckily, there's not really any damage. The carpet got a bit wet along with the uh, uh, coffee table and the light fitting, but nothing that won't dry out. I don't think my spider's very happy up there, though. I don't think I would be either if my home got flooded out like that. So, yeah. All fun. Um, he's coming back tomorrow to replace the ballcock. He's isolated it for now. I'm guessing he didn't have one on the van to replace it with. So he'll pick one up from the office or their supplier. Anyway, 
doing a bit of shopping here and there and I've got some donated bits I suppose we could call them <laughs> gifts I don't know I've got to pay the postage on those because I haven't done it yet um, won't be able to do that until next week now and there's something else I've got to pay for that he's got me as well oh, I'll arrange all that when I message him later anyway a whole bunch of stuff here on my desk that uh, has either been given to me or I've bought from charity shops or eBay. So, in fact, I've got a bike light missing. It's in the bedroom. Two lights missing, actually, that are in the bedroom. I suppose they're not missing because I know where they are. Anyway, <laughs> my stepdad has given me this. A um, 176 scale excavator. Stobart rail. Civil engineering. Long reach. So, I'm quite happy with that. I don't know if I'll ever put that on my layout. I mean, I'd have to glue it down. And I don't really want to do that. I'd rather just sit them on. I don't want to glue any of my vehicles down. They're the only things I don't want to glue down. So, either way, it's a nice little display piece, isn't it? don't know if I've actually shown you these either, have I? He's, um, he also gave me that. A 176 scale fire truck very old one I've also got that one the green goddess one and I've also got this is one that I bought ages ago this one as well an AEC I believe yep yeah. yeah he gave me those two as well um, that is for a light that's in the bedroom so we'll get to that in a little while um, from the community shop which is literally just on the corner of my road now I got these two die-cast cars. That one's got a pullback motor in it. Whee! That one's got a sort of friction motor in it. We have to do that with it. As you've probably noticed, it's got four-wheel drive. With a bent rear axle, I've just noticed. Which, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Okay, there does seem to be a shaft that actually runs down here, inside that plastic casing. Because I've actually pulled this chassis off and there is nowhere else that the drive is because when you undo that screw the whole bottom comes off. It's only that one there and there's two little tabs at the back. So you get the, the floor pan here as well. It's all part of it and comes off so there's nothing on the other side of that floor pan. All the mechanism is here. I actually quite like the look of that truck as well. It's a Ford F-150. It doesn't have a maker's name on it. It's just got the scale on it, which is 132. Ford F-150, made in China. That is it. Nothing else. But uh, it's not a bad looking toy, in my opinion. Neither is that, really, for a toy, you know. I've never really liked vehicles. Or I didn't used to, which had the uh, pullback motor because they're always sort of cheap and nasty looking. But that is actually a nice looking little Porsche. So that's those. Uh, what's next? Oh, a whole bunch of Hot Wheels that I bought as well. Some hidden up here, which uh, I got from two packs of nine cars, and I only kept ten of them. The others are gone in my uh, for sale tub. I was a bit disappointed with that, to be honest. Um, yeah, so I kept ten. And I bought those, when did I buy those? A couple of weeks ago. But a few days ago I bought another one. I've actually kept all of them, I think. They're all piled up here. It was actually a good couple of uh, nine packs that I got. Anyway. Going back to charity shops, this is something else I got in the community shop as well for one pound and it works and it works on batteries and the uh, power supply because I've actually got a Goodman's power supply for that or for anything Goodman's that, that will fit. I had it for ages. See, I've had this for ages, been sitting in my uh, box of adapters and I'm glad I actually kept that and not got rid of it 
Oh yeah, and it also came with this little um, leathery pouch. I don't know if it's genuine leather or not. No, that's not genuine leather. I just smelled it. You can tell from the smell that's not genuine. But, uh, it's got the belt clip on the back there as well. Like I said, works great. I love it. For, just for a pound. Can't argue that. I hope that hasn't leaked out anywhere. No. I just found this upside down. <laughs> right. What's next for charity shop finds? The Katali charity shop. I've got these three items. I don't think I've got anything else. Don't know if these work yet. These are um, Giel? Guile? I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, DDR3 RAM modules. These are two gigabyte modules. £2.50 each. So, I do hope they work. I've got a motherboard at the moment that apparently does not work. Uh, it did work when I posted it off, but it was returned as non-working and the uh, buyer's right, it does not post. So I don't know what happened to that. Could have been my shitty packing, I don't know. Anyway, um, I've got a couple of items for 50p as well. I've got another one of these 24 volt AC adapters that are often used for the old uh, low voltage Christmas lights. I've got several and I couldn't remember if I was missing any adapters so I just grabbed one. Never hurts to have a spare and I do actually have a use for that. I didn't. I just bought it because it was 50p and it's handy to have a spare. But uh, I actually do have a use for it now. Brand new. Oh. I say brand new, this one doesn't have the um, fixing screws on it. Oddly. It is two-way though. I don't need two-way, but it is two-way. I'll explain what that is for. That It's actually related to that remote control. Right. Marketplace finds. This is the first one. I got this the other day, a little uh, Bedford CA Co-op. 176 scale milk float. I absolutely adore this little thing. I really do like the, this is by Oxford Diecast, by the way. And I think what I really like about these is just the amount of detail on something so small. I don't know if you can see that, but I've actually painted the tail lights in. A um, little sort of bumper there. It's got the number plate at the top there. Door handle on the side. If the camera wants to focus. I wonder if I do that. Um, and on the front, again, it's got black painted grille, it's got the headlights, it's even got the wipers painted on the uh, window. Normal toys, they have the wipers sometimes uh, on the windows itself, but they don't paint them to highlight them, but on this they go to a lot of effort on the detail. I mean, I can see all the milk bottles in them crates, or at least what's meant to be the tops, so... So no wonder these ones cost a fair bit of money. That was actually £5 second hand. And to be honest, you wouldn't get these um, scale of vehicles much cheaper than that. So, yeah. The vehicles are going to cost me a lot more. I don't want too many vehicles. Although I am thinking of actually collecting these because I do really, really like these little vehicles. Right. A light bracket. Another eBay purchase. It came with a rear light, which I will show you when we go in the bedroom. I didn't want the rear light, I just wanted this bracket, because uh, on one of my shopper bikes, I've got a set of these particular lights, but I snapped the rear bracket. I actually used two rear brackets, one for the front and one for the rear light, because I didn't have this one, and they're not easy to come across these brackets. Well, actually, the only bit I had was this bit. I didn't have the clamp. Um, but like I said, I snapped the rear one, and I don't have a spare one. And I saw this on eBay with the lamp, and I thought, well, I can't find anything else, and I really do need that bracket for my bike. So I went and bought this <laughs> with another lamp. So I've got, like, three of the same rear lamps now. That doesn't hurt, though, does it? I better take that in the bedroom when we go. They're all right, stand there for a minute. Ah, speaking of lamps, I've also been on eBay and bought a couple of uh, barricade lamps from the same seller, actually. 
he's uh, not too far from me, he's in Norwich. There's actually uh, two sellers in Norwich, or two collect, pardon me, two collectors in Norwich, I should say, that also sell the odd lamp on eBay. So I've got another one of these traffic lamp E types, and this German lamp, Führ lamp. If anyone who's German watches this, please correct me. And uh, feel free to uh, lay into me if I've completely butchered that pronunciation. <clears throat> but anyway, this is a typical sort of European light anyway. Seems like a lot of them have these uh, features. You've got your on-off. Then you've got the um, static and flash feature there. You switch between them. This one must have a bit of age to it because it's got a filament bulb in it, not an LED. But, uh, I actually quite like this lamp. These remind me of ears, so I've been tempted for Halloween to stick a face on there. Yeah, this even this lens bit here is quite thin. I don't think any of my other bi-directional lamps is um, quite that thin. I'm sure they're all thicker. But anyway, it's quite a nice lamp. For uh, £37, I think I paid for that one. This one is probably the most expensive E-Type I've ever bought. And I think... Without looking on eBay, I can't quite remember, but I think it was £41. Um, but, this is an early version of the lamp. Um, I'm sure someone will correct me, but I think this is like the 1970s version. Maybe 80s, I'm not 100% sure. All I know is, it's an early version. I don't have an early version. All of my others are all later versions. I sort of no later 80s, 90s versions. Um, one way to tell if it's an early version, just from looking at the body, is this. It's got the early uh, logo down there. And one of the reasons I bought this as well is because it's got the Hardens supplier name on it. So it sort of goes with my visibility branded lamp, which has also got that on it. It's a little bit rusty. It's pitted. The paint works not Look there, I'm not spitting words out. Eh? The paintwork is not too bad considering its age. But here's the biggest difference, I think, and that's the actual circuit thing here. Although the actual shape, like this bit, the actual plastic body is exactly the same, there is quite a few differences. One, it's white, not yellow. I've actually got a yellow one here to show you. But most of the differences are under here. This centre contact is exactly the same, it just slides back and forth. See, it's got that little ridged bit there. There's literally just a little contact under there, so to turn it on, you push it that way, it makes contact. When you pull it, push it back the other way, that creates a space between the um, strip here and the contact and turns it off. Extremely simple. But the later ones had another strip here and another strip there, so it had three strips in total and they were all the same length um, unlike this one where that one's actually shorter I'm sure that might even be a different type of plastic anyway, either way, I'm actually happy to have an early version in my collection because they're not com common to come by I'm getting tired, so if I do mess up my words, that'll be why. I'm just going to stick this under it out of the way. Right. Take my little bed. No, we still haven't done in here, are we? Uh, a fellow friend. A fellow friend. A friend and fellow collector. I told you I was going to stuff my words up. Um, has sent me some more freebies. He's uh, haven't unwrapped it yet, but he sent me this PS2 game, which is Mortal Kombat. Just got to look at that label, <laughs> or the logo, I should say. So that is one that, despite how many PS2 games I've got, that I don't have. So thank you very much for that. He's also sent me two Tildorn lenses in red. So I've got a couple of choices here. I could use these to convert one of these to red. So I've got the large lens in red and a small one. I've already done that with um, blue lenses to one of these. Uh, 
But what I'm going to try and do first, I've got a different style of Tildorn in the cupboard that needs a lot of work done to it. Um, it's quite scruffy. It does work, but it's basically two halves of two different lamps put together and that means it's got two different lenses in it. They don't match. So he sent me a pair of these so I could put both in or if like this lens matches up with one of the lens lenses 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 currently on one side of the lamp then I'll just change one so I've got a couple of options there I'm not sure what I'm going to do the tabs are broken off on these so I may end up having to glue these in place but that's not a problem and the third thing is this unusual pretty cheap warning lamp it's not actually a barricade lamp, this is meant to go on your car. So it's got the 12 volt cigarette light plug there. And that clip is meant to go over your um, door window. So you wind your window down, you hook this on, wind your window up and that stops it from falling off. And you just plug it in. Simple, extra warning light. Never seen one before and I might actually buy another one of these. Because I do this in red. I believe I have to change bulb carefully prize out prize lens out of casing and I've actually realized this is the same lens on an old RMJ barricade lamp in case anyone was wondering and here's one here it's the same lens absolutely identical not made by the same company though because JSP took over RMJ <laughs> but yeah I really like that so thanks a lot for that as well right can I go to the bedroom now <laughs> I haven't forgotten anything ever right yeah they can stay there oh yeah I've also uh, emptied all the boxes of Lego out up there and the cardboard boxes that is, so I've got them stacked here, they're stacked in the bloody bathroom, they're stacked here, there and everywhere at the minute. All to go down to mum's, so she can use them to pack stuff for her move. I could actually leave this fourth bulb out of there, but uh, the reason I've got a bulb out of that light fitting is because of this one. So. I couldn't get that one in and then I realised that with this light fitting that I bought brand new from eBay it came with a little suction cup that would have made life a bit easier but the problem was because that's a new lamp the um, locking contacts were a bit stiff and that one's a little bit taller than this one so what I did I used this one to put it in there and twist it back and forth to loosen them up a bit and I managed to get the uh, this bulb in so that's got to go on the bed this one is a remote controlled colour changing LED. You can see the three chips in the middle there. Um, it does work. I've tried it up in the ceiling light, which is the other reason the bulb is out. Uh, but it just didn't work up there for what I wanted. I wanted um, that to run separately. So I didn't have to have the main light on because it, it didn't really give the effect I wanted. So this, I got the bulb, it was brand new by the way, for one pound out of a charity shop. Still sealed in its pack. The um, remote still had the little battery tab in it that I had to pull. So I went on eBay and I was looking for these little GU10 light fittings and I saw this one. It was about eight quid for this. And I actually quite like that design. Um, I've got to modify this because obviously I can't get a wire in the wall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a hole into here and I'm pretty certain I've got some rubber grommets in a tin down at Mum's. All different sizes so I'm going to put one of those in just to stop the wire getting caught on either side. And basically make a cable entry on the bottom there and that's going to go up on the wall above the bed. And I can angle it how I want. And I'm going to put a light switch through that gap there on the wall. I was going to put just an inline light switch, like what I did with my uh, bunker light in the hallway. Just quickly show you that. Just like that, but then I realised I've got to use a three-core flex. 
because obviously that's got to be earthed. And I'm not going to get three wires in the switch. So, unless there is three contact. I'm going to open up. I've got a spare switch, brand new one. I'm going to open it up and just see if it has got just the two or three contacts in it. So I think you can get them. But if not, I'll just put a switch on the wall. It's not a problem. So I'm quite looking forward to getting this up on the wall. I think, as and when I move, I might get some more of these. Because I still plan on getting myself into a bungalow. And I wouldn't mind some actual wall lights like that. You know, positioned on the wall and installed properly. Because in a bungalow and... Uh, with access to the attic in a bungalow, I'd be able to do that. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? So, oh, there's one more thing in the bloody lounge I forgot to show you. Which is actually related to that. <laughs> so, not last week, it was the week before, I think, I bought this on eBay with another item from the same seller. Um, this was less than five, no, sorry, just over five pounds. Um, sold as spares or repairs because it was untested. And I do not have a little Hornby 040 locomotive with this style body. And I quite liked it, so I went for it for that price. I thought spares or repairs, if it works, it works. For that price, if it doesn't, it doesn't. I've got just one for spares. I could put the body on another one. Anywho, it didn't work when I put it on the track. So, I cleaned the wheels up. They weren't actually that dirty, to be honest. Um, and it still didn't work. But, all I did was put it on the track, and I just literally just gave it a few sort of light nudges like that, and jerked the motor a bit, and it soon started up and went flying off around the track. So, well, that's good. I can't remember if I've shown you the Duchess of Abercorn. That's one I bought the other week as well. And there's the Duke, both in LMS Maroon. Um, both of those from the same eBayer, actually. Along with that one, so I've got three pretty nice steam locos from the same eBay. Uh, oh, and an 08 diesel shunter, which is there, which I had problems with, which I've fixed. But from the same seller, or the same week I bought this, from the same seller, I bought six coaches of spares or repairs. So I got these two. I've got Great Western here. They, whoops, they work. But I guess he put them on as spares or repairs because it's got that little bit missing there, which I suppose I could find a bit of plastic from somewhere to repair that with. Same issue on this one, but again, it does roll around the track quite nicely. It's an auto car, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and there's one more in here. The other three are in the lounge because I'm actually giving them to someone else. This one looks like it's a bit weathered and sometimes these bogies do stick in a turned position which can cause it to derail but not very often so looks like someone's weathered this as well. But uh, I might be putting a job lot of, well I say a job lot, there's a few coaches that might be going on eBay as spares or repairs. Because uh, <clears throat> I've got this one now that I don't need. Because it's the brake coach. And I've got another brake coach there. And I don't need two for a rake. And I don't need two rakes of them. So to me, I might as well just sell one that I don't want. I've got another one behind me that I might stick in with a job lot as well. And a few other bits I can get rid of. Yeah, oh, and I've got the... Um, HM Duet connected to both of these tracks now. But what I want to do is go on eBay and find something that I can use as a plug so I don't have to keep disconnecting these wires because it's quite time consuming actually on doing all four of these every time you want to set up the railway. Of course, I've got no way of fixing this down, so I've got to take it off when I fold this up. Uh, so I'm going to see later if I can find something like a little simple plug that I can use on there. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, yeah, it's all working. So uh, I'm pretty pleased. 
Oh yeah, that's a new arrival as well. But uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I just need to go and answer a call of nature. So it'll only be a few seconds for you, but that'll probably be about 10 minutes for me. Right, that's a weight off my mind. So, where was I? Oh yeah, 08 and the uh, new addition to the rolling stock. So last week, again from the same seller I've got that, that, that and a bunch of other stuff from. I bought this little thing for £17. Oh, pardon me, a little um, maintenance crane that's called. All works. It's got the chain there and the two winders. That one I think raises it, if I remember rightly. Yeah. So that is the one that raises it. And one this side to raise and lower the hook. So quite a nice little buy. I don't know why I bought it, I just liked the look of this and I thought it was an interesting little thing to have. And this 08, which I bought a few weeks ago from the same seller, which runs fine in a straight line. Well actually it goes around corners now, but when I first got it, it ran fine in a straight line until it got to the corners and it would derail. Every time. So um, I was playing around with it the other day, I had it all apart, cleaned it all up, put it all back together, gauged the wheels, put it back on here and I got it to limp through that corner, and then it limped through that corner, and then it limped through that corner, and then it got to this one right beside me in the controller and derailed and threw this rod off. And I thought, hmm, I think I've just found out what the problem was. Somehow I'd completely missed that the um, screw that holds this rod on just a screw in the middle wheel, had come loose and eventually it just flew off. In fact, there's the screw, and I found this the other day laying on here. It was actually just that side of the switch. So it must have gone past there at some point, fell off there and somehow stuck onto the wheel, or stayed on the wheels I should say, until it got to there and then threw it off. But I put another screw in and tightened it down, it does actually go around the corners now. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Right. Before I get on to uh, the new light fitting in the bathroom, I bought this from the same guy that sold the um, little uh, red locomotive I shot you first in the bedroom. Little open sign, LED one. Just a random novelty sort of light I've always wanted I finally found one so I bought that while I was at it. Oh yeah and the other three coaches are here. Now they're no good to me because they are the really 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 old double O stuff as in the actual double O you know not the two O's the actual double O stuff. Too old for my track now I'm going to give those to someone who I follow on YouTube, I've got his address, so I've just got to box those up and post them out. I did have a box ready for them, but I was a bit of a twat and took it downstairs and put it in the bin. So, <laughs> so I've got to get another box, because I wanted to post these Monday, but because I did that and the rubbish got collected, I was like, oh dear, no I don't have one. Never mind. But yeah, all three of those, these are all tin as well, these are all metal, or tin. So, I don't really want to keep stuff like this in my collection because I don't want to clog it up with stuff that I can't use. I'd rather clog it up with stuff I can use. So, I've got to box those up and uh, post those ones off. I do believe that is it for in here. I can't see my spidey friend up there at the minute. It's definitely looking drier than it was, and at least it's not dripping anymore. Ooh. All right. Facebook find number two is in the bathroom. It's actually up on the wall. Yep. I went and bought a shaver light for five pounds. Not that I need the socket, I just wanted it for the light. So when I'm actually in front of the mirror shaving, I can actually see what the hell I'm doing. So, 
bought that a couple, couple of days ago. Yeah, two days ago, and yesterday I actually installed it. Um, but I couldn't think where to get power from. Obviously, it can't be the light switches because they only have lives, no neutral. I did toy with the idea of putting in a fused spur from that, but then I thought, can I actually put a spur up there or would that go against code? I'm not sure. I didn't want to take the risk, so I opted out of that because I was going to run a cable up from there to the top, put a spur up there, and then put, run some trunking around and down to that light. Uh, and do it that way, which was a hell of a lot more work as well. But I couldn't really think at the time of any other way to do it. And then I went to bed that night and I was laying in bed. Look right there, it was a bit cold. I was laying in bed and I was come up with another idea. In here if you've still got an old boiler like this, because your home is outdated like mine, not only do you have the gas fired heating there, right, you have the old immersion heater in here as well, which as you can see I've disconnected. Alright, the reason for that, <laughs> because the light's connected to where that was. See, don't worry, the cable grip has got that, so it's not going anywhere. Um, I will confess, I do need to actually change this, but that's going to be quite easy. I can just tape the new one to that, because this is only two core, I need three core. But I haven't got any at the minute. So I thought I'd get as far as that and make sure this idea is going to work. I need to put a three amp fuse in there as well. But I thought, as this is never used. I've been in this flat 11 years, this is never used. Never once have I turned that on, so I thought I might as well just make use of it. But uh, when I do move out eventually, I will reconnect that up there, so don't panic. I'm not going to leave it like that. I will reconnect it. Um, I do not know what that fuse spur is for there. If there's a cable entrance on that, I could have probably connected it to that, if that's not in use for anything. But anyway, I will put a 3 amp in there. Not tonight though. It's probably not the most conventional way of doing this, but it was certainly the easiest. Don't even know what size breaker the boiler is on. Uh, a 16 amp. Ah, it's a bit big for that. That'll do for now. Put the wrong size brake, put a what six on it. But in fairness, that would have been spurred from like the existing light if I could get into the attic space. Which I can't. <laughs> so I've just done it that way. I've done it the easiest way possible in this flat. It's not like it's going to go bang. Well, I've got to get some three core flex anyway for that other light fitting, so I'll use a bit for that light as well. <clears throat> it was a two core is all I had at the time. I actually bought that two core for another project, and I cannot remember for the life of me what it was. Oh well, it couldn't have been that important then, could it? All right. Oh hell, is that the time already? 20 past 8? Right. No more rambling then. I need to get this video edited at some point this week. Might do it tonight actually. Oh, don't want to delete that one. That's the one I want to delete. <laughs> it's only a bit of a sort out on the desktop. There we go. Right. So, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I will... Uh, Talk to you all again in the next video. Bye.